And let's start with some injury based ads. So there, there were a lot of sort of ticky tack injuries that pushed players out from games. Um, the most serious of which is Miles Sanders had a knee injury today at the end of a 74 yard run in the third quarter. He does have an MRI scheduled um, f- to get that looked at. I mean, Ertz also went out and has an MRI scheduled, but that's on his ankle. So hopefully it, it sounds less serious. But back to Miles, if he's out and missing an extended period of time with a knee injury, um, you're looking at Boston Scott there as the ad. They have a short week this week with a Thursday night game scheduled against the Giants. I don't think that he plays if he's hurt enough to get his knee looked at with an MRI on a short week. I think that Boston Scott becomes probably one of, if not the priority ads, um, probably the most value. However, I think it, if it's on, a, maybe it's only on a short term for a, a week or two. I'm not sure. Um, it depends on what the MRI results show. But Boston Scott currently rostered in about 11% of leagues. If it's, I'll ask you the fab question two ways because we don't know how serious the injury is with to his knee. If it comes back and yep. it's something mi- more minor like an MCL or PCL and he's out like two to four weeks or, you, you know, something like that, just call it four because maybe it's two to four or four to six. Or maybe it's only yep. a couple. Like, how much fab are you spending on Boston Scott if it's that way versus if it's a season ender? How much would you go out and drop on Boston Scott? Yeah. So, my, I'm anticipating that he's going to be out the next three weeks in my analysis here because he's got, you know, we, you just said Giants on a short week, home against Dallas, and then a bye week in week nine. So, if it's anything that's somewhat serious, he's not going to be playing the next three weeks which would open up for Boston Scott. Obviously, it's, if it's more serious than that, then you're getting into week 10, 11, 12. And like, that's basically most of the season anyway. So, you know, it, for me, so Boston Scott week one, he had nine carries in Miles Sanders absence against Washington. He had 11 total touches, um, six points, nothing, nothing to write home about. It, you know, I don't know how much there is to like about that Eagles offense right now. We, be, you know, they get way behind and then Carson Wentz gets scores a bunch of points in garbage time. I actually wanted to talk about Carson Wentz as a, as a pick upable quarterback because three of the last four weeks he's had over 20, but he's rostered in like 64% of leagues or something like that. So, I mean, he has proven that Carson Wentz is good. Now, when it comes to Boston Scott, uh, I mean, if he's going to stay involved in the passing game, um, he had two catches for five yards after Miles Sanders went out when they were playing catch up. My guess is, is that if he, so let's assume that he plays the next two weeks and then bye week and then Sanders comes back. I think you're probably looking at like 15%. If, if Miles Sanders is going to be out longer than that, then I think you could justify going lo- like if let's say Miles Sanders is out for the year then I think you could go like 60 if Miles Sanders is going to be out for the next like six weeks, which puts him back around fantasy playoff time. Then I think you discount it down to like 35%. Yeah. um, Yeah. I would say he's probably out until after the bye week, which gives you three weeks of no usage. I would agree. But that's probably that's really only two weeks for Boston Scott. So two weeks of Boston Scott in a terrible offense, I would probably spend 15 to 20% of fab just because I don't think, I don't think that there's a whole lot of points there. He's a starter. He's a starting running back. Yeah. Um, if it's the rest of the season, I agree with you. I'm probably up at, I'm up higher certainly, but I'm, it's still not an exciting role. And he's undersized at the position. I'm really not sure how much fantasy value he'll really have. I don't think he's a top 12 back the rest of the season. I would probably say top 20 to 25, but a 30 to 40%, I think would be as as high as I'd be willing to go. And if I missed out on him, I missed out on him because he's, he, he would be what I think Miles Sanders is. And that's like, a low end RB two high end flex play because that there's there's just that offense is so bad this year. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there with you. And, and we've talked about our philosophies throughout this, but for me, it comes down to save your sauce. Don't spend your fab until you get that big injury to a, to a main guy in like week 10, 11, 12, that can win you the title. I don't think that this is this, even if Sanders is out for the rest of the season, I'm not anticipating that to be the case. Um, and so it comes down to what is your risk threshold from a fab perspective? And do you even want Boston S- Scott to, you know, I think unless you're really desperate for a running back, it, this is a really tough one just because their offenses look so bad. And even when Boston Scott was the only guy there at the beginning of the season, he still wasn't even doing that much. So this, this is a really tough one. Uh, for me, and, and I know I just threw out the 15, 35, 60 numbers. I, like me personally, if I'm going on and bidding on him, I'm going to cut that in half just, just because it's a bad offense. But I think that's probably what you have to bid to get him in your leagues. I understand what you're saying. Whoa, didn't see you there. You can't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. I was just making some trades. How about you? Hit that subscribe button. I'll show you what it was.